Hey guys and girls, welcome to episode 13 of Two Guys and Some Horror. It has been a long run so far and we are super excited to talk with you guys in this holiday season. Yes, this is our first Christmassy episode. We're going to be talking about Elves from 1989 and Gremlins from 1984. Um... Yeah, we're going to talk about Elves first because it is a terrible film that I really don't want to talk about too long, but we need to discuss it because it's bad and we want you guys to know it's bad. Did uh, I heard they originally aired Elves on uh, Hallmark. What? No, I'm making it up. <laughs> <laughs> it, it feels so much like a Hallmark or... Uh... It feels so much like a Hallmark movie. A made-for-TV film? Yeah, well, yeah. Made for, a bad made-for-TV film, like made in the 1980s. It yeah. was just... Uh... So let's knock out this... Uh, I'm going to knock out the summary real quick, fast. We can get that out of the way, and then we can just rip this thing to shreds, because right. it is pretty damn bad. So, here's our story. Uh, a young woman discovers that she's the focus of an evil Nazi experiment involving selective breeding and summoned elves, an attempt to create a race of supermen... She and her two friends are trapped in a department store with an elf, and only Dan Haggerty, as the renegade loose cannon Santa Claus, can save them. I really love that description. Um, it really puts a puts a nail in its coffin, because uh, they they that you know the one important thing in the synopsis that they should share is that her grandfather had sex with his daughter to to have her. So she is the offspring of uh, incest. Is that why Kirsten's mother is so messed up? I don't know, but like, I feel like they decided, uh, hey, let's let's make an evil stepmom character, but let's make her actually her mom, and which kind of backs up why she's so damn evil. Well, like, she 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 puts a burlap sack around. For those listening, she this this mom. Uh, earlier in some exposition in the scene this girl's like you're the only friend i have i only love you cat without you my life would be ruined i have that same (laughs) and so the the mom comes by with a burlap sack like yoink and she dumps the cat in the toilet and she that's how she drowns it like they show her drowning this cat like not not literally drowning so it's a one cut scene yeah she takes the burlap sack puts the cat inside it nabs the cat walks it the camera continues with her. There's no cut there. Right. She goes right to the toilet, Which... puts the burlap sack gently in the toilet, then there's a cut. That, I think, is when the cat leaves the bag. But, oh my god, what a freaking crazy scene, man. I I really, I don't yeah. know where you were going with this, but like she is no, absolutely I just, nuts. I was just like, this is not how a mom would act. Like, why did the girl have that, the cat in the first place? And, like, her... Her grandfather is in love with her or something, and she's like, so her brother. I got I got a quote oh here. Oh my god, best character in the movie. Oh, he's like, I saw your tits, and they are nice, and I'm gonna tell all my friends I saw them. So he's a peeping tom brother. He's spying on his sister showering. She catches him. He goes, I fucking love seeing girls naked, and you've got fucking huge tits. I'm gonna tell everyone I saw them. Like, <laughs> yeah, what a fucking what big a tits freaking and brother! Oh my god! I saw him. this kid's eight. By the way, I think this may be the first time they get like a little eight year old to just swear on. By the way, these this is the uh, I am actually quoting it. I'm not adding curse words. That was actually what the young man said. Yeah, yeah. Just Verbatim. FYI, yeah, this is you've a PG thirteen film. Yeah, you've got big fucking tits. Yep, you've got fucking big. And tits. And I'm gonna tell everyone I saw him. Yeah. Oh man, uh, uh, this is a PG thirteen film. Back in 89, and clearly should not have been a PG-13 film. We'll get to some more reasons why when we get to uh, Nude Grandma later on. Naked Grandma. Naked Grandma. <laughs> Naked but, Grandma! So the, the film opens up with Kirsten and her <laughs> and her girlfriends, the Sisters Against Christmas. Is that what they, is that what they called themselves? I, I can't remember exactly. It, I don't care. Yeah. I don't care. So they these. open up. They're doing some weird ritual. They're going to camp out at the mall. No, 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 before that. So, oh. real quick, how the elf even gets resurrected? Because this is, this is like, the first moment of, like, God, this movie's terrible. Oh. She has to have cut herself. The blood has to hit the ground in that spot where they're doing the ritual. They don't know that this is some special ground piece, but that's what spawns the elf to come out. I don't even remember that. Yeah, because it's I, so I, damn I bad. I didn't remember that. Honestly, I was watching the movie, too, and I just saw, oh. like, the elf just kind of showed up. It's ridiculous. Uh, so these Sisters Against Christmas, yada, yada, yada. They're a witchcraft cult, whatever. We've got witchcraft. We've got uh, ex-detective become Santa, become 
badass, we've got Nazis, we've got incest. What else do we need in this movie? Mm. I don't know. Maybe your grandfather is your grandfather and your father. <laughs> we need a writer. That's what we needed, Clark, because that could have fixed all of this. When her little brother says, is everything all right? No, Willie. Gramps is a Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> another freaking quote that i have written down that's so funny oh my god um, i need to know the ki- the the uh the santa guy i need to know the connection between the elves and the nazis this is just, all know. right so let's speed run through this uh that way we don't waste too much time uh and make people think that we're just griping about a film it genuinely is bad folks like this isn't a joke um i i just want you guys to know don't ever watch this movie Okay, please don't. don't it's not it. worth it. <laughs> oh no, I would definitely rec- hey, if we, if we get some alcohol and we play a drinking game, like I'd be down to watch this again. It yeah, is... but the puppetry in this movie is terrible. There is no puppetry. It's that a... elf is not a real person. It's just a it's just a head that wiggles with arms. Oh, I mean, that's, yeah. <laughs> it, okay, I don't really know what this thing's made out of, but right. it looks like a wannabe animatronic slash puppet thing. Mm. And I agree with you. It probably is just a head with a clay-mated body. Not even clay. It's, I don't know what it's made out of. Oh. I thought it was a real person's head and it just shows it and like wiggles and stuff. No, because it never... Nope. You just see a head. Well, all you see is a head whenever you see the elf in it. For the most part, yeah. It looks like a full-sized person. I, I think there is some debate there that we, <laughs> we are not well, prepared to have because we didn't research that, but... Yeah. Uh, no, I, I mean, it could be a real person's head under there, but then why doesn't it ever blink or move its mouth to, I don't know. You're probably right. That's really right. creepy if it's a person under there. That's way more creepy than the thought of it just being a puppet, Clark. Yeah. You're freaking me out now, man. Well, we know that... You've Dan just Haggerty, broken all of my train of thought. <laughs> Dan Haggerty really made this movie. The, the down on his luck. I have to give ex, him some credit, yeah. Ex-police officer who was trying to get a Santa job, then got it, got the Santa job of his dream, gave up the juice, drank co- free coffee and donuts. And... How could you not give that man a job when he comes in with such a soft-spoken heart? You know you need more security around the holiday season. Couldn't you just give me a shot? I'm clean, man. I got my, what is it, 18-month chip? Yeah. I don't know. He's, you know, rehabilitated alcoholic, which seems to be a very common theme across films. Uh, right. That we're watching around the holidays. That's really sad. Alcoholism can be rough. Uh, anyways. You talking from experience or I'm just kidding. <laughs> we might have an, a bonus episode about my struggling alcoholism later on in the future. If that's what you want to see, tweet us at. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Two um, guys horror pod. Uh, anyhow. Uh, so, this movie is on a list with other bad movies. Here's some of those things. The Room. Jack Frost, which is on the list for this month. Uh, and then the best worst movie, or uh, what is that, Samurai Cop film? Yeah. yeah, Samurai Cop. So those are some of the other films that people have put at a similar list with this movie, which I find really funny. Oh man, this movie is so great. Like, if you watch this with friends, oh, so good. Like, especially like the scenes Wait, where... are you being serious right now about elves? Oh yeah, yeah, oh my, for sure. Oh my god, Clark. Oh, it's Don't... a terrible movie. I'm but never hanging out with so, you. It's I'm so never... bad, it's worth sharing with people, and then you just laugh when they no. see it, and you're just like, ah! No! Like, as soon as she's like, your father is your grandfather and your father. Dude, and it takes her a good, I don't know, five minutes in that movie to put it all together still? Well, it's... Yeah. It straight up told her, though. Your father's upstairs. No, my grandfather's upstairs. Your father's upstairs. No, my grandfather's upstairs. I don't know how many times they went through that loop, but it was insane. It was, it was worth it. Your grandfather is your father because he banged your mom, so, which is his daughter. By the way, um, I have this goof here. So the Santa Claus is on the case to find out what's going on at the mall and why the other Santa died because mm-hmm. he's a he's an ex-cop. So he, he basically meets this girl who summoned the elf and the elf wants to make make babies with her to make the super nazi special secret race which they're not aryan they're elf you want a half elf race that's the true master race yeah anyhow we left that uh, out of the yeah we haven't talked a lot about that yet no that, that, that they anyhow like i don't even remember how the elf died <laughs> the elf basically you have to get that stone thing the brother so she 
spoiler alert if anyone cares, she's laying in the forest. The brother, she tells the brother to go get the stone. Bring the stone back because the stone is the only thing that can push the elf back dead away to wherever he came from thing. But when he's gone, the elf slides his hand up the girl's hoo-ha. Do you remember this scene? He basically has sex with her. Because the end credit scene is the... Is the fetus. Is the fetus, which is a half-elf, half-human baby. And that is your potential for a Elves 2. That never happened, thank God. Well, why is the movie even called Elves if there's only an elf? But I... But there were two. The half-elf well, baby. The fetus. <laughs> well, that's one and a half. That's stretching it. Uh, that's stretching anyhow, it. Anyhow, when, when he's... Uh, McGavin's in the library. He's like, where... He, uh, but he's looking for books on the occult. And she's like, mm-hmm. section 666. Uh, Dewey Decimal System. Uh, it looks like the books on parapsychology would be reserved in section 130. So, haha, elves. Learn your Dewey Decimal System. Great way to screw it up, guys. Way to fuck up. Anybody would have noticed that. Anybody. No. Uh, I that's, thought a, was, that's a fun goof. I had, yeah. That's a fun one. I had a lot of fun with this movie. Like, I, I really enjoyed it. It was so bad. At the end of the day, yes, I could probably laugh at this movie. Maybe I was being a little pretentious, giving it too much <laughs> shit. I don't know. I just feel like we keep watching some of these really bad movies, yeah. and I'm starting to get beat up by the bad ones so much that I just <sighs> don't give them any credit. And I used to be the fun-loving, oh, we could yeah. watch this at a party and get drunk. But honestly, I don't ever want to watch this fucking movie again. I, I one day we'll we'll have like a group together and we'll watch oh. it. Like, we're gonna watch elves. We're gonna yeah. shit on it. Yeah. Um, we'll have a drink again. Go, but maybe not for five years until you're over your uh, my PTSD from yeah, it. Yeah, your your PTSD. That would be awesome. Your B, I would appreciate your, that. Your B B M S D. Your bad movie. Uh, my shit coffee. Shit coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Shitty coffee. Hey, there's a little nod to last week's episode. If you haven't listened to it, thanks killing. You get some shit coffee. <laughs> Oh man! Did you see this All coffee? Right. So you you genuinely would watch this movie again in a group setting, drinking? Uh, yeah, I, I think I would. I think I would. I, I definitely yeah. thought the scene where you. <laughs> All of a sudden, see the entire naked body oh, of the mom. I thought we were gonna skip over that. I thought uh, we were out of the the woods. Oh man, no that that was one of those. Okay. Oh, that's there. We're going here. All right. So this is a PG thirteen film with full frontal nudity in 1989. I don't know how that got past the board. They must have said, ah, it's a Christmas movie. How bad could it be? I'm the not... amount of fucks this movie gives, literally, yeah. and the amount of nudity in this film. You do get Kristen's boobs in the shower and out of the shower when she's chasing her brother for half a second. Nothing to look at, nothing to remember. I just know because I was like, how is this PG-13? Yeah. Um, but then I get to the bad scene. And the full frontal nudity of the mom... uh, When she gets electrocuted. Yeah, puts me over the limit for like... Yeah, that's definitely not PG-13. That can't be pretty... Uh, Well, it's... It's definitely a movie. Um, I thought it was made for TV, but once you hear the kid swear, then you're like, oh... HBO? Late night? I don't even know. Whatever this was on, (laughs) however this was released, it was not worth it. Direct to video. I I feel that releasing this movie to the public was a huge disservice as I am now relatively dumber because I enjoy it so much. Um, so just so <laughs> the listeners know, um, I've been working on a little bit of a grading rubric for horror right. movies. Um, kind of how I've been categorizing them in my mind and rating them myself. Um, right. I'm going to put that to paper and Clark and I are going to discuss it a little bit um, off podcast. And then start using it probably here in the new year, I would guess. Probably in the new year. I don't want to rush it um, because I do want to kind of test it out, just him and I. Um, And then, yeah, we'll start using that kind of for a grading slash ranking system for movies that we like and don't like. Um, And then kind of give you guys the formula so when you're watching, you could also give a ranking on it. Um, But yeah, just want to give you guys a heads up on that because I think that's going to be a lot of fun and, and add another layer slash aspect to the show um because we're looking for more ways to to give you guys ways to talk to us about movies that you guys watch that we've watched and tell us how much you love or hate them Mm. uh with that being said elves gets a very low rating for me probably a two out of ten 
Not gonna go much higher than that. Sorry, friendo. This is a fun movie for me. I enjoy it. If uh, I would say, uh, probably like, what's your Rubik is from one to ten or? Oh, to ten. You oh, can 10. give it a zero. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to give it like a, a five. Like I would watch this movie. I don't, okay. If we had a group event, we wanted to watch something that was bad, that was laughably bad, and I would think this would be a good experience to have. Sweet. All right. Um, well, that's the end of Elves. Uh, stick around, because we are going to be talking about Grimian... Gr- 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 we are going to be talking about Gremlins right now. Right the fuck now. Right now. Alright, anyone who hasn't seen Gremlins, this might be spoilery. So just a heads up, this is a classic. It is from 1984. If you haven't seen it, please... Please go watch it. It'll be a lot more fun for you to have watched it. That way when we talk about it, um, you kind of know what's going on and there isn't anything that spoils you. We don't want to do that. This is a kind of a highly acclaimed Christmas horror film um, that we're going to be discussing. So uh, here we go. The quick synopsis is a boy inadvertently breaks three important rules concerning his new pet and unleashes a horde of malevolently mischievous monsters on a small town. Oh, God. <laughs> Don't show me that. <laughs> that is disgusting. I hate that thing. You showed him the head of the, uh, the elf from the movie. Uh, you know what? I think I'm going to make sure that's in the thumbnail for the episode. You should. Somehow. I'll make sure it's there. Um, but anyhow. Back so, to Gremlins. Gremlins. Uh, classic. It's a classic film. I, I watched this many times growing up as a kid, and I always loved yep. Gizmo. He's one of my favorite uh, 80s movie characters. Uh Gremlins 2 was uh, was another favorite of mine growing up. So uh, I have a lot of nostalgia connected to this movie. Um, when uh, when let's let's dig deeper into Clark's past with this film. When would you say was the first time you probably ever saw Gremlins? Gremlins? I don't know. I was like a young boy, like maybe 5, 6. Like we've we've seen quite a few like Gremlins, Gremlins 2. Uh, I would always want to rent these two movies in my I think my parents may have gotten annoyed at that, but you know, back in the day where you would go to a video rental store and you'd pick movies out and you'd go home and you'd watch the movie once or twice and then you'd return it. Um, where where did you grow up roughly? Oh, jeez, jeez, we You don't have to like give like specific details, <laughs> uh, but like statewide, West Coast, East it, Coast. It was San Dimas, California. Okay. So uh, if you've ever seen Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, it was that kind of small town. We lived by the San Dimas Canyon park there okay and uh i don't know we just a really uh really big 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 gizmo fan nice yeah cool we uh just so you know we this was an impromptu thing that i just started picking on clark's uh life with but we do want to do a like get to know us episode eventually where we just kind of talk more about like our love for horror how it came about um kind of our our childhood with horror if it was your childhood kind of thing and then um, just do like a 10 questionnaire trivia to get to know us um, a little bit more generally, not so much about horror, but just in things in general. So this is kind of a fun way to get to pick on Clark a little bit and pull pull some of his um, childhood memories out Maybe of him. We'll start doing that to you too, buddy. Hey, hey, you can do whatever you want, man. This is our Whoa. show. This is our show. Uh, director of Gremlins, Joe Dante, famous name. Writer, Chris Columbus famous name stars zach galligan phoebe cates famous names i don't know Hoyt. (laughs) so we're going to talk about zach galligan here in a second but hoyt see uh looks like he's the teacher oh yeah hoyt hoyt yeah yeah, yeah. the dad yep yeah so he i guess he had a bigger career back in the uh the early 80s he's a big writer right now 70s yeah i don't think he's yeah anyhow uh gremlins (laughs) Did you know that Stripe and Gizmo were originally the same character? No, I didn't. Mm. I'm glad they aren't. Because Steven I like Steven Spielberg's the one who changed that. It's interesting. He insisted there should be one gremlin who was good. Yeah, he's not a gremlin. He doesn't, yeah. <laughs> so for those that don't know, or that may be curious about why I said that, basically you have Mogwai. Mogwai are the cute, furry little animals that nature has given us. It's a Cantonese word. It means uh, devil or demon. If you ruin a Mogwai by breaking one of those three rules, um, what are the three rules again? Let's do them real quick. So water, 
You no get them feeding wet. after midnight? You get them wet, they reproduce. Yep. Uh, if you put them in bright light, they'll die. Yep. And if you feed them after mi- after midnight, they start their metamorphosis. Yes, where they evolve into... Gremlins. Gremlins. So, uh, we get a series of bad mistakes. Um, water gets spilt by Corey Feldman's character. Great job, Pete. His name is Pete, Pete Fountain, which I think is funny because Fountain is like fountain, fountain of water. He's the one who spills the water on the Mogwai that turns it into a gremlin. That's an interesting connection there that I would not have made because I'm not, uh, yeah. Fun, right? Okay. Not that fun. So, <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not a fun person. Nerd right. moment. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. so basically we get some water spilt on him, pops out five more. Right, at, at, at the very beginning. Also, I wanted to point out yeah. before we get into the Zach Galligan's character. This guy's not been in very many movies. Like he's 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 not gotten consistent work beyond being in the first two Gremlin movies as a main role. Everything else has kind of been like just shorts or like one one episode. Really? Of uh, yeah, I would have thought that he had way more. Oh, okay. He's in Hatchet yeah. Three though, which is going to be on the list. Okay. Night Beast. Uh, there's some things that we might see him pop up in in our list, just so you know. Right, nothing that you... But nothing major, no. Nothing like that's been as big as Gremlins, no. I would say. So that's probably his most uh, recognizable role. He's also... Oh. Been, there's another uh, movie, like Waxworks. <laughs> he was in Ar- Warlock, the Armageddon. Okay. Like Tales from the Crypt. He was in the TV I, series. Yeah. I would, yeah. I, he is. He, he hasn't been around too Hell much. Hellraiser three. Yeah, yeah. Hellraiser three as and well. And he comes back for waxwork too. But he's not even credited. No. He just gets stabbed randomly. So that's exciting, though. So we are going to be literally dissecting a lot of the movies that were the closest thing that you could say to a big movie, besides Gremlins. Like he really yeah. hasn't done anything. That sucks. Because well, I think he's a pretty good actor. You think so? I think I so. I thought he lacked energy. I don't think... He, yeah, I mean... But that could be the role he's trying to do. Is yeah. that it's not... Like, what's so energetic about that? I mean, I guess there's scenes where you want energy. I'm sorry, Mrs. Krenzler. Yeah. This is it. Okay, so... This movie is A Wonderful Life. It's A Wonderful Life. But they add demons from hell in it. Or they add, they add these monsters in. Okay. And let me, let me kind of show my point here is like you have the scrooge character Mm -hmm. who is or the the angry banker the rich lady who's like telling some random lady like oh please don't foreclose our house and she's like she's like i mix business with pleasure or something and then she's like no it's too bad yeah something like that the bank and i are in the same business 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 of making the business of making money right 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 so anyhow she uh she's like this rich banker and then you have like the the John, the Jimmy Stewart character, who is Billy, who's trying to teach his bartender friend, who he is romantically interested in, to love mm-hmm. Christmas, because she has a sad past, which we'll get to. Which we 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 find out her sad past, and she and the hero they they move past it together with their new friend Gizmo. Um, anyhow, bright light, bright light. Yeah. So this dog is the dog in uh, the first movie. We, we actually watched, I believe. I think he's in Videodrome. What? The same dog, yeah. Nice! I think it's the same dog. Uh, but... Do we got any evidence to back that up on the I, internets? I think we, we can get it, but... Uh, I, from what I recall, like... I remember looking this up, and it was just the two of them are the same dog. Okay. Um, I like that. No, that's... I mean... It, that is awesome. That's a really cool uh, piece of trivia that I did not know. And I've seen this movie a thousand times. Let's make sure. But, yeah, what did you... Uh, so, anyhow, back back to what you were saying, the five... Uh, yeah, yeah, Mogwai. so just walking through kind of the mistakes that were made, right? So we get water poured on them by accident by Mr. Fountain, pops out five more. Then Pete asks Billy, he goes, hey, you've got five now, can I have one? <laughs> and Billy's like, oh, I don't know if this is a great idea, Pete. So basically, Pete, you know... I don't know if he did it on purpose or not, but he definitely was trying to figure out a way to get a mogwai, that's for sure. So, that happens. Then the mog- uh, the gremlins get a little handsy, and they, right. they cut the wire to the clock, or whatever they do, to stop the clock from moving. And then he feeds them after midnight, and that's when they all pod and turn into real, true gremlins. And that's why I'm... I'm so, 
I don't know what they were going for. I don't know exactly how the, the stuff works, but water seemed to, to hatch them into gremlins off the Mogwai, right? Right. Like when they first, no, when they first came out, they were cute little Mogwai, not gremlins. When they ate, then they became the nasty green skinned gremlins, right? Right. So it definitely seems like the food after midnight turns them into evil little creatures. But they were already But evil. they were already mischievous. Well, they, they were biting that kid. Like, yeah, they were Gizmo was finger. super tame. He was, like, hanging out with them. They... Basically, you can't spawn more off of one. They'd have to breed whatever breeding means for them I naturally. Mean, I don't think they can. I think they, they live forever. But Yeah. Well, so that's I... an interesting fun fact that we could try to find out some answers to one day. Um... All right, so that all happens. We get, we get more of our little gremlin friends who become very mean. Um, they start to play bad. Yeah. So. So he played gypsy. And oh, he's gypsy Head. and pumpkinhead. Okay. So he wasn't in. A... Video drum, but he is in a film that yeah. we did do recently, which is Pumpkinhead. Right. I, nice. I'll have to find out more, but I was pretty sure he was in. Uh, <clears throat> in video drum. Either way. Find that out later. Animal actors are the best. So. They're uh, cute, adorable, and it's always nice to see them getting more and more jobs. Right. Um, let's see. What other fun facts uh, or fun parts of this movie did we have? I think I wrote some a couple of notes down just in case I hit this point where I'm like, eh, you know, I don't really want to go through the whole plot because so, it's a movie people just need to watch. The guy he, uh, the girl he worked with at the bank, that's the girl who's in the second movie. Girl he worked with at the bank. Phoebe so, Cates. Not Phoebe Cates. So you was it Phoebe Cates? Yeah. That's Kate. Okay. Yes, she was in the she's in the second movie. Yeah. So the girl he works with and he was looking at pretty romantically, like they looked at each other, they they shared a glance, but then he asks out the bartending girl. Which is also Phoebe Cates. Wait, really? Yes. So she has to work two jobs because her dad oh. lost his job. So she's or no Harry needs help at the bar. Either way, she has the bank teller job. She also is the bartender. Ooh. This is why we got confused the other night on That's Discord. That's why I'm confused. Yeah. Yes. So okay. So I I'm crazy. And <laughs> You're not crazy. You're I good. made up another woman or another another heroine character. Yeah. Who doesn't exist? <laughs> Anyhow. That is so good though. That uh, that actually makes me laugh really hard. Oh jeez. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. No, because we talked about this a couple times, and I was trying to figure out why you thought. Phoebe Cates was a different person, and the love interest was separate from Phoebe Cates' character. So, it, so it's Kate Berenger in the second movie as well? Yes. Okay. So if you go, uh, if we go look at Gremlins 2 real quick, uh, we can cut this out if we need to. Dead Space, Dead Space, Dead Space. You've got Zach and Phoebe Cates playing Kate and Billy. They both come back. Okay. My big question is, the older bank teller asshole, is, who right. is he? I can't, the old guy? Um, not the old, old guy, but the, the rich guy was like, Hey, Kate, do you want to come over and see my apartment? You oh. never saw my first one. or And then uh, my new apartment. And she your, goes, oh I never saw your first one. And Billy laughs. I, I always was found that. Was that the guy who, he was, who came by the bar and was being a little douche to yes. him? Yes. He's uh, from he's, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. He's been in a lot of movies. Um, which also stars Phoebe Cates. That's the scene, the famous scene where she comes out of the water and takes off her top. He's watching her oh, from the bathroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, he's, and then the uh -huh. girl walks into him doing yep, it. And then yep. he says, don't people effing knock. Don't people effing knock? Yeah, yes. yeah, I know what you're talking about. Anyways, um, I thought it was cool that both of them were in the movie together. And then they also were in Fast Times at Ridgemont High together. Right. I love it when you see actors and actresses. This is just a side note. Me talking. Sorry if right. this isn't interesting. But I think it's fun whenever you see groups of people acting together again. Because that means they have a good chemistry and a good relationship on camera. Sometimes that also means they have a good friendship off camera and they like to work together, which is kind of fun to see. Mm. Uh, or sometimes you just get paid a lot of money and you do what you're told. Um... So they say, uh, so near the beginning when Randall Peltzer, or Hoyt Oxton, the actor, shows up at the curio shop to meet the, the kid's grandpa who he kind of steals the grim, or Mogwai from, mm -hmm. he, uh, they show a broken down gremlin what the car oh okay and uh <laughs> apparently it features it looks like the gremlin the amc the gremlin logan looked closer to the gremlins in this movie so that may be how they based what they based it off of interesting the logo for a car yeah essentially 
Okay. That is a fun fact. No, yeah, that's pretty cool. So, um, I want to talk about Murray a little bit, the yeah. old guy. Was he a Ooh. war vet? I get a feeling like he was a World War II war vet. He kept saying World War II. Yeah. W-W-I-I. Um, he's your typical 80s veteran, in, right. in my opinion, and, and how we portray them in movies. He complained a lot about foreign-made things. Uh, he, he has PTSD, clearly, from the war. Um, he was scared of things that he can't explain, like the gremlins. And then he, he, he... I just love his character. He's in a lot of other films as well. Um, that I find to be really fun, and um, you're talking about Murray in general. Yeah, Dick Miller. Um, he's basically he only wants things that are American made. He's yep. definitely got a character down. I think he is also one of our heroes in this film, kind of. Um, yeah, well, he's the only recurring character outside of Phoebe Cates and uh, Billy. Yeah, he's in one and of my favorite uh, '90s films, Small oh, Soldiers. Oh, right, right. Yeah, he is. He's in the Small truck Soldiers. driver man who gets them right. all the toys. Um, yeah, so not to go too far off track, I'm going to close that page so that way we don't go over his IMDb because that is not the point of this. I just wanted to bring up his character because I really enjoyed that character and thought he did a really good job. I loved all of his cranky old man tendencies. It reminds me of my grandfather. Um, and, you know, I mean, I don't know. This movie, it's, it's just a good heartfelt film. So we get... Where are we at in this story plot? Because I feel like we would be doing it a disjustice or dishonored if we don't walk through this plot properly. So we get we meet Billy. <sighs> we he has the bank incident with the lady. His dog. She wants to kill his dog. Um, he gets he fired. His dog in a soup. He almost gets fired. He doesn't get fired though. Because the other guy sticks up for him. No. I don't. I don't think so. I think he just like the the this boss gives him reprimands him and he doesn't get fired. Yep. He almost got fired is what the guy was saying. Yeah. So you have the uh, I'm almost vice president and I'm 24 years old. You know why? And Billy's just kind of like ah, I gotta deal with this guy's bullshit and the guy's just being a huge <laughs> douche to him. While Billy's drawing the most epic mocking uh, artistic comic of the old lady. <laughs> right. <laughs> which is which is really cool. Um, we also meet, that's when you meet Kate, you see the relationship there, the fawning over her, the wanting of her, the romantic feelings he has for her. Um, he then, there's the quick jab that she gives the, the vice president of the bank. And then he walks, Billy walks her home, walks Kate home. And that's where you get the first glimpse of this sad heroine. Right. Um, and Billy tries to, you know, cheer her up because it's Christmas and all that. This isn't where we get the famous Kate story, but we can talk about the Kate story here. Oh, man, I don't think I want to talk about the Kate story, but you... Because it's brutal, man. It, it's, yeah, um, I'm, I'm depressed enough. It adds another layer of horror to this film. Basically, right. I'll, I'm going to do it quick. That way you don't have to get too depressed. If you want to earmuff it, earmuff it. No, do it. I'm going to run through it quick. So Kate basically says the reason why she hates Christmas so much is that one year her dad was working late... Um, and her mom and her were waiting for him. He never showed up. They couldn't find where he was. Four or five days go by. They get a search party out there going. She goes to light up the chimney at the house. Unfortunately, she smells something terrible. Thinking it's just a bird or a cat, something getting stuck in the chimney, the firemen come, open up the chimney top, and they find her dad in a Santa suit holding presents. He died. He slipped and fell, broke his neck, died instantly when he Which fell. Which they have to say, they have to mention that. Yeah, he. So there's no suffering. Didn't. Yeah, yeah. So that was just like. And that really. Well, she is... attacks that on too. Like at the very end, he's like, he fell down, broke his neck, died instantly. It was just like, oh. And that's how I learned there was no Santa Claus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was just. It's so why? sad. Yeah. Well, you have the wonderful life, and then you have to add in something really dark, very real, and then the whole time it's just a bunch of monsters with cartoon noises whenever yeah. they bop each other on the they head. Really, they really lighten up the film, though, right, right after that by going to the mall and having Gizmo drive the little RC car around. Right. And <laughs> we had to make a movie for the kids, Gizmo. too. <laughs> what? Right, right, right. Yeah, oh, toys for the kids? Well, yeah, that's, that was the whole purpose of the movie, was to sell toys. Were Furbies out yet? This is 84. Uh, Furbies didn't come out until no. the 90s, right? No, no, right? Furbies weren't out yet. No, that was yeah. mid late 90s. Because Furbies, I feel, were like the new modern age uh, Mogwai slash Gizmos. They made, they made a Gizmo Furby. Uh, but... Okay, so getting back, getting back on track for the right. plot. So... Um, the dad in the beginning of the film had gone and gotten the Mogwai, 
brings it home to Billy. Billy gets this gift for Christmas. Billy then um, starts taking care of the Mogwai and accidents happen. Plop, plop, plop. We've got more um, Mogwai gremlins. Um, and then mischief starts happening. So uh, talking about the mischief that they have caused, I think this is a fun way to do it. We can just kind of spitball different aspects of what we like the most. I personally enjoyed the old lady going up the roller coaster right. um, because the, the gremlins had hacked her wheelchair lift for the staircase in her home. So this is the rich lady who basically has no heart. She's the Scrooge of the film um, or the Grinch, depending on which film you depict as Christmas being the better one. But anyways, the gremlins end up um, you know, doing some things to her wheelchair, causing it to malfunction and sending her ass straight out the second story window. Right, right, right. That was where you're like, oh, the gremlins finally saved Christmas. They, they killed this old lady who loves her cat. <laughs> and definitely that, that family will, will get the loan they want. I think it's really the start of, of saving Christmas in a sense. Um, but yes, because this is just the beginning. Like, it's just the beginning of the crap that these things pull. Well, none of, the, none of that's resolved. Like, there's, there's no resolution in the movie aside from, like, we don't, we don't really see if anyone dies or not. We know all the gremlins do. But the only... Do they? Try to remember if all of the gremlins die. Because that bar scene where there's like 50 gremlins in there... Right. By the way, those are all individual gremlins. None of those gremlins are reused in that scene. They had they created all those puppets. Right. Those puppets were worth so much that at the end of the day, they would check people's trunks... And luggage and stuff when they would leave the set to make sure no one was stealing one of the gremlins. They sold them now. A lot of people own parts of the gremlins. Right. Like the gremlin arms from the set of Gremlins 2. Um, which they knew what they were doing. Um, you could probably get a hold of that stuff. There's a... I don't know. I, I just remember we called Stripes Mohawk when I was a kid. So yeah. we'd always refer to him as Mohawk. Yeah, I mean, that, I thought that was his name for the longest time until yeah. I realized his name was actually... Stripes. Stripes. Yeah. I don't... Yeah. Uh, also, I, I, I thought it was really cool how the Gremlins and the Mogwai, they started to talk more towards the end of the film. Uh-huh. Um, because Stripes, actually at the, <clears throat> at the mall, towards the end of the film, mm -hmm. Stripes calls... <laughs> He goes, Gizmo, caca. Yeah, caca. <laughs> we were, I remember that when we were kids, we would always say that. We'd go, Gizmo, caca, and then we'd laugh. But he, he takes the key, he has a gun at this point, and he shoots at Gizmo. I don't... And then Gizmo just brings up the blinds. Gizmo saves the day, you know? He drives Well, they play car. that... What is, what is the agent scene? Remember he was watching the agent, the, the 007 kind of guy? And then he's like, ooh. So that's when he hops in the wheels because he wants his own, you know, spy well, it's car. because he's like... Rah! Yeah, and that was one of the things. But that they like, play like the over, like the sound of secret agent so and so, blah blah blah, and it's Gizmo driving the car, and it's like yeah. this moment in Gizmo's mind where he's like, "I am the secret agent." Oh, it's adorable, <laughs> absolutely adorable. But sure, yeah, so he dodges all of the the gunshots that Stripes shoots at him, um, and Gizmo saves the day at the end of the day. I thought, uh, yeah, no, I, I definitely love the, the gremlin carolers. Na, 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 na. It's just they're all dressed up. This this movie couldn't decide whether or not it was uh, like a family movie or if it was kind of like a dark horror comedy. And it kind of, the very start of the film starts out as like, we're going to make It's a Wonderful Life. And then we start seeing these monsters who are just, actually, does that, the teacher die? I think the teacher dies. I think the teacher dies. Uh, well, anyhow, I, I recommend you watch this movie for yourselves. This is definitely a, it's a good, it's a family movie, I would say. Uh, it's a little dark, but it hasn't, I feel it's aged pretty well. Yeah, so my, my six-year-old kiddo uh, won't watch this yet. Yeah. Uh, she's too afraid. But I agree, like, this is a family film. I remember sitting down around the holidays, this is one of the movies we'd pop on, and, uh, I think everyone should watch this movie around the holidays. I watch it every year around Christmas just because it's one of my favorite uh, horror Christmas-related films. And, um, yeah, I mean, I don't really know if there's anything else that we want to talk about. 
think we're good on Gremlins. It's it's just a damn good movie. Well, I love the smokeless ashtray, and I would love one for myself. <laughs> oh, we gotta talk about the end of the movie, yeah. The real end of the movie. Um, oh, the real end of the movie. When the grandpa shows back up and tells them, uh, I told you you were not ready. Yeah. Basically. And then uh, Gizmo is talking to the grandpa, and the grandpa tells Billy he has something he wants to say to you. And he says, hey... How are you able to understand him? And the grandpa says, and this is this is uh, one of those big moments in a movie, but the grandpa just says, um, "So, in order to to hear, one, has to one listen. must listen." Right. And I think everyone can take something out of that in their own different way. And in order for you to hear what someone is saying, you must first listen. Yeah. Just remember that, folks. Yeah, especially Clark. during the holiday, t- <laughs> especially during the holiday times. No, that was that was definitely a passive aggressive uh, jab towards me, by the way, folks. No I'm kidding. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> it definitely wasn't. No, it wasn't. No, no, no. It's a. Uh, this is one of those movies that just kind of brings me back to my childhood. So it was it was fun. Which we're gonna get way more into yeah. in one of our future bonus trailer ish episodes where we deep dive into Clark and Curtis a little bit more, just to let you get to know us. Uh, we're gonna come up with fun fun questions. Um, But for now, what we want you guys to do, guys and gals, please follow us on Twitter and Instagram at the number two guys horror pod. I know a lot of you already have. Cindy, thank you for being such an avid listener. Mimic, you as well. Um, J-Man, I know you're out there, uh, also known as The Yeti. The Um, Yeti. And anyone else who's following us actively out there, thank you so much for that. We really do appreciate it. Um, and yeah, let us know what you guys like, what you don't like. Um, anything else you want the people to know? No, just remember Two Guys Horror Pod. Um, we are looking at movies to kind of watch through in the upcoming uh, months. We have everything set up until about January, which now we're, uh, we're going to start meetifying up our list. So if you have any recommendations or if maybe you want to come on the show, come reach out to us. Uh, what is, I believe our email address is two guys horror pod at gmail.com, but, uh, it might, is it, let's see, we can cut that out if we need to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, I think it's two guys, some horror at gmail.com. Two guys and some horror at gmail.com. Yeah. So, uh, reach out to us at, uh, two guys and some horror at gmail.com and, we uh, we're welcome to f- we welcome feedback as well as uh, potential guests for now. Love to hear from you. Yes, we appreciate every listen you guys give. There are many different ways to check out our podcast. Um, what we've noticed is that you guys really don't have one specific format that you guys like. So we really enjoy being able to put this out there on Anchor. Anchor handles everything for us. You can check us out at anchor.fm slash two guys and some horror if you search for us on there you'll be able to find us as as well but we are currently live on spotify apple podcasts breaker google podcasts overcast pocket casts radio public and your standard rss feed if you're into that sort of thing we currently um are recording episodes every other week um and basically putting episodes out two weeks in advance for you guys so that way um everything's basically ready there's, um, you know, we got a long list of things. We're planned all the way out till January, um, and we're filming this basically the week of Thanksgiving. So mm. it's really cool that we're able to do this for you, but we do want more feedback from you guys um, just so we know that we're on the right track. Um, so anything you guys want us to do, let us know. We appreciate you all, and thank you so much for listening. Thank you. You're beautiful. Bye. Bye.